So what begins the seven-year tribulation period? Something very simple. If we relook at the first part of Daniel 9.27, it states, And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. So let's look very closely at the first half of this verse and break it down. The he is the Antichrist. Make a strong covenant could also be stated as he shall make strong. The idea is that of giving strength or stability, of making it firm and sure. Also note that the verb confirm is not the same as making a new covenant. So the covenant already exists. It is likely either the Abrahamic covenant made thousands of years before, or the Old Testament in general, which as a whole could be considered a covenant. It is a high probability that any covenant that the Bible portrays would have to do with God and Israel. It is also possible that the rebuilding of the temple is in it. But that's going too far out on a limb, and we're going to try to stick to what's actually written. I have many ideas about what is going on here, but I'll leave them out for the time being. Regarding the many, by simple logic, we know that the covenant is not made with one or a few people or even everyone in the world. However, we don't know who the many are, but it probably is either the Jewish people and or a large group of people. These people would be concerned about what was actually in the covenant. Although God's covenant with the Jewish people has no end, for some unknown reason, this agreement has a duration of seven years. We know that the week is for seven years. We have to be very careful here because the covenant may state something like, we will revisit this issue seven years from now, which is another way of stating that the covenant will be renegotiated seven years later. There is another thing that many Christian prophecy teachers get wrong. They assume that the Antichrist will suddenly be known after confirming the covenant. However, the Bible states that he will be known after the rebellion which probably means Christians who turn their back on the Lord Jesus in droves. Many prophecy teachers imagine a scenario where a handsome man approaches a table with a few Jewish leaders, signs the covenant, and then they can say, ah, now we know he's the Antichrist. Sure, it's possible that this scenario could happen, but here's an alternate scenario. A group of 24 world leaders meet with Israeli leaders to confirm a covenant. Yes, the Antichrist is among them, but there are four or five men that could easily be the Antichrist. So the world sees it as a ho-hum moment and quickly goes about its business. Okay, so how does the Bible contradict knowing who the Antichrist is at the confirming of the covenant? Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. It appears we won't be able, at the beginning of the tribulation, to know for certain who the Antichrist is, called here the man of lawlessness. Because this verse is surrounded by verses that happen at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, which is midpoint in the seven-year tribulation. The point is this. The seven-year tribulation period starts when the Antichrist confirms a covenant with the many. In order to confirm this covenant, the Antichrist will have to be in some position of power already, like the head of a group or president of a country. Either before this covenant is confirmed or immediately after, the Jewish temple must be rebuilt in Jerusalem, and sacrifices, both bloody and unbloody, must be resumed. The covenant may have everything to do with it, something to do with it, or nothing to do with the temple. It could be that the Jewish people will decide they want to build the third temple, and they do it all on their own, even 20 years beforehand. We also know that, even if Israel decided to build a third temple, it would take years, even using modern machinery. It's possible that the covenant will state that the Jewish people can resume temple sacrifices, and that the Antichrist and his power bloc will back them militarily. We don't know. However, we do know that by the midpoint of the tribulation, three and a half years after the confirming of the covenant, the sacrifices will have to be going on for at least some amount of time. So how do we know that? In the second half of Daniel 9.27, it states, And for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. 
The Antichrist cannot stop something that hasn't started, so temple sacrifices must be ongoing. In the next video, we'll look at what comes next. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably like these other two videos. Find them on my channel under videos. Oh, and hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. To get future notifications, click the bell to receive all future video notifications. Evolutionary ideology. You Here on this channel, you'll learn answers to some of the most pressing questions of this age. Creation, age of the earth, rock layers, fossils, social issues. And over the centuries, the Bible has come under countless attacks from those who seek to disprove it and to discredit it. And no book of the Bible has come under more attack than the book of Genesis. That's why we here at Answers in Genesis are dedicated to showing you how the Bible offers the best explanations for origins, biology, geology, anthropology, astronomy, and the top social issues of our Day. This is an organization that I support. They have an interesting channel on YouTube and they have many answers to people's questions.